The Bohr model is a very useful model that describes the structure of the atom because it does two very important things. Firstly, it incorporates the quantum theory of energy, the fact that energy is quantized. And secondly, it explains the formation of discrete line spectra produced by individual atoms. So in this lecture, we're going to focus on the latter. We're going to discuss how line spectra produced by individual atoms can be explained using the Bohr model. Let's begin by looking at the simplest element, the hydrogen atom. So the hydrogen atom contains a single proton and a single electron. And if the atom is at room temperature, the electron will be found in the ground state. The electron will be found in the orbital that is lowest in energy in the orbital that is closest to our nucleus. And that represents the orbital with the principal quantum number of n equals 1. Now n equals 2 and n equals 3 are the two orbitals that are higher in energy. And those orbitals are known as the sided orbitals and when our electron is found in those orbitals the electron is said to be in the excited state. Now let's suppose our atom is at room temperature and we begin increasing the temperature of that room. Eventually the electron can gain enough energy to jump to a higher energy level to a higher orbital. Now once our electron is found in the excited state, for example in the orbital given by n equals 2 or n equals 3, the electron can now jump back down to a lower energy level and when that takes place that releases a single photon. Now these photons correspond to a particular wavelength and these photons produce the observed spectral lines. So let's examine the following diagram. Let's suppose we have the following energy diagram. So as we go higher, our energy of the electron increases. So let's suppose our electron is found in the ground state. So this is the ground state n equals 1. Now each orbital, each energy level corresponds to a discrete quantity of energy. For example, the ground orbital corresponds to an energy of negative 13.6 electron volts. So when our electron is found in the ground state, it is lowest in energy. It has the lowest quantity of electric potential energy. It's most stable. Now, if the electron jumps from n equals 1, let's say to n equals 2, it essentially gains energy. And that's exactly why our energy increases. It becomes less negative. Now, in order to jump from n equals 1, one to n equals two, the electron has to gain a certain discrete quantity of energy that can be found by taking the difference of these two quantities. And likewise, if our electron wants to jump from n equals two, to n equals 3, once again the electron has to gain a certain quantity of energy that is given by taking the difference of these two quantities. Now, when electrons move down energy levels, for example from n equals 3 to n equals 2, it loses a photon. It essentially releases a photon so it loses energy. And the quantity of energy that it loses is equal to, once again, the difference between these two values and that energy is stored within that photon that is released. Once again, when electrons move down energy levels, they release those photons and the photons have a wavelength that corresponds to that particular transition. So, what that basically means is the following. If our electron moves 
from n equals 3 to n equals 2 and then it moves from n equals 2 to n equals 1, two photons will be released. But those two photons will have different wavelengths. So they will have different quantities of energy. And those different quantities of energy correspond to the observed spectral lines. So to see exactly what we mean, let's look at the following example. So we want to find the wavelength of the photon of the light that corresponds to an electron moving from n equals 3 to n equals 2. So the electron essentially jumps down one orbital from 3 to 2. So, the first question that we have to answer is, how much energy is released when the electron moves from n equals 3 to n equals 2? That will tell us how much energy that photon has. So we simply take the quantity of energy it has at this level and subtract the quantity of energy it has at this level. So negative 1.5 electron volts minus negative 3.4 electron volts that gives us positive 1.9 electron volts. This is the quantity of energy that is released when it moves from n equals 3 to n equals 2. And this is the quantity of energy that is found within that photon. Now, let's actually convert from electron volts to joules. So if we are to find the wavelength, we have to use this equation. And this equation requires the usage of joules and not electron volts. So we know that the conversion from electron volts to joules requires that we multiply 1.9 electron volts by the following factor. So 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 joules are found in one electron volt. The electron volts will cancel and we get about 3.04 times 10 to the negative 19 joules of energy is found in that photon. Now, we apply this equation. This equation gives us the energy found inside our photon with the frequency f. Now, we don't actually want to find what the frequency is, we want to find what the wavelength is. So we replace frequency with C divided by wavelength. So H is Planck's constant, C is the speed of light, and H is what we're looking for. So we know H, we know C, and we found E in part 2. So let's rearrange and solve for the wavelength. The wavelength is equal to H, Planck's constant, multiplied by C, the speed of light, divided by E. So we plug those into our calculator and we get about 654 nanometers is the wavelength of the photon of the light that is produced when the electron goes from n equals 3 to n equals 2. Now, if we follow the same exact procedure and calculate the wavelength of the photon released when our electron goes from n equals 2 to n equals 1, the wavelength will be a different number. So what exactly can we conclude? Well, we see that the Bohr model correctly predicts the wavelength of the light emitted by the hydrogen atom. So we can use the Bohr model to basically explain the formation of discrete line spectra of individual atoms.